JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for November the 12th. I am Haralamos Pissuros, head of research here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar continued to marching north against all the other major currencies on Thursday and during the Asian session Friday, gaining the most versus the Canadian dollar, the Kiwi and the British pound in that order. Now the strengthening of the US dollar and the weakening of the risk linked currencies suggests that markets may have continued trading in a risk off manner. However, turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that this was not the case. We see that all but two of the indices under our radar closed in positive territory, with the only exceptions being Spain's IBEX 35 and Wall Street's uh, Dow Jones. The US dollar may have continued being bought due to expectations of faster rate hikes by the Fed after the US CPI is accelerated by more than anticipated, but the effect on equities was limited as we already warned uh, after all. Remember that ahead of the release, we highlighted that we were expecting a short-lived correction and that due to the resilience of, um, uh, of uh, the US economy to the, la to the latest bottlenecks, investors may stay willing to add to their risks, to their risks uh, uh, excuse me, to their risk exposures after, uh, after the data are out, despite increasing expectations over faster uh, rate hikes. Now, the further strength in the US dollar also resulted uh, in a fresh record high in the USD TRY pair and we see no signs uh, of the rally abating any anytime soon. Yes, the rally in the US inflation has helped the dollar but the Turkish lira has been in a free fall as well. It lost two-thirds of its value in five years weighing on the income of Turks along with extremely high inflation while 25% of its value was lost uh, this year mainly due to concerns over the credibility of the Turkish Central Bank as uh, President Tayyip Erdogan has been pushing for lower interest rates despite inflation uh, running near 20%. Since September, the Turkish Central Bank has cut its benchmark rate by 300 basis points, arguing that the inflationary pressures are temporary and, it's, and it is expected to deliver another 100 basis points cut uh, when it meets uh, next week. Now, back to the US and the greenback. Another thing that may catch investors' attention in the next few weeks may be the race on who will be the next Fed chair when Jerome Powell's term ends in early February. At the moment, it seems that President Joe Biden is still weighing whether to keep Powell or pass the torch to Fed Governor uh, Lael Brainard. Powell appears to be the favorite, at least according to an online political wagering, gathering 68% against Brainard's 31%. Powell has the backing from uh, moderate uh, Democrats as well as Republicans and a track record of averting a financial crisis and helping the economy to recover from the pandemic uh, recession. However, he also received uh, criticism on letting inflation surge into a 31-year high even as millions of citizens cannot find a job. Now, in case Brainard uh, in any case, Brainard uh, is, considered, um, is considered to be more dovish than Powell on monetary policy, which combined with the element of surprise could affect the dollar negatively if she's chosen. Now, in case Powell stays in charge, the dollar may rise slightly, but not massively. For now, we expect it to continue trending north on expectations that uh, the Fed may eventually need to push the hike button 
earlier than previously thought. Now as for today's events, the calendar is uh, very light today as well, with the only releases worth mentioning being the US jobs, uh, job openings uh, for September and the preliminary University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index for November. The job openings are expected to have declined somewhat, while the Michigan Index is forecast to have inched up to 72.4 from 71.7. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock AM GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, a greater weekend, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next week. JFT just fair and direct.